Dialogue 1. Product Launch. Hi, Jane. Hi, John. What's up? We're launching a new product. That sounds exciting. Yes, it is. We need a good plan. What's the product? It's a new smartwatch. Cool. What can it do? It tracks fitness and monitors health. That's useful. How will we market it? We'll use social media. Great idea. Which platforms? Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Should we make ads for them? Yes, ads will be important. What about influencers? Good point. We'll collaborate with them. How do we choose influencers? They should fit our brand. What's our brand's image? It's modern and health-focused. How will we get the word out? We'll start with a launch event. Where will the event be? At a popular venue in the city. How do we invite people? We'll send out invites and use social media. What else is part of the plan? We'll have a special offer at launch. What kind of offer? A discount for early buyers. That should attract customers. Exactly. We also need good photos. Who will take the photos? A professional photographer. What about our website? It needs to be updated with new info. Should we add a video? Yes, a product demo video. Where will the video be posted? On our website and social media. What's the sales strategy? We'll sell online and in stores. Will there be special promotions? Yes, limited time bundles. How do we track success? With sales numbers and customer feedback. How often will we review progress? Weekly meetings should help. What's our goal for the first month? To sell at least 1,000 units. That's a good target. We hope to exceed it. What if we need to adjust the plan? We can make changes as needed. Will we have customer support? Yes, a dedicated support team. How will we train them? Through detailed training sessions. What's our return policy? 30 days with a full refund. Sounds fair. Anything else? We'll need to monitor market trends. How often will we check trends? Monthly reviews should be enough. What's our budget for this? It's set for marketing and ads. Will there be a follow-up campaign? Yes, after the launch. What's the main goal of that? To keep interest high. I think we're ready. I agree. Let's do this. Exciting times ahead. Dialogue 2. Business travel. Hi, Jane. Hi, Nancy. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Ready for the trip? Yes, I am. Where are we going? We're heading to New York. Cool, what's the purpose? We have meetings and a conference. That sounds busy. When do we leave? We leave tomorrow morning. What time is our flight? 
It's at 9 a.m. Are we flying direct? Yes, it's a direct flight. How long is the flight? About three hours. Do we need to bring anything special? Just business attire and documents. What about our hotel? We're staying at the Hilton. Is it near the conference? Yes, it's very close. What's the first thing on our agenda? A meeting with the client. What time is that? It's at 11 a.m. Where is the meeting? At their office downtown. How should we get there? We can take a taxi or subway. What's after the meeting? We have the conference in the afternoon. Is there a specific dress code? Yes, business formal. Will there be other events? Yes, a dinner with partners. What time is the dinner? It's at 7 p.m. Do we need to prepare a speech? No speech needed, just participate. What about sightseeing? We can explore a bit in the evening. Any places you want to see? Maybe Times Square and Central Park. Sounds great. How long are we staying? We're there for three days. What's the return plan? We fly back on Friday afternoon. Are we staying in touch with the office? Yes, we'll update them daily. Should we pack snacks? It's a good idea. What time is our return flight? It's at 3 p.m. Will we need a car service? I think a taxi will be fine. Do we have a meeting schedule? Yes, I'll send it to you. How about any important documents? Bring all the contracts and reports. Do we need to confirm anything? Just confirm our hotel booking. Are there any prep materials? I'll email you the details. How's the weather there? Check the forecast, it's chilly. Should we bring jackets? Yes, it's better to be prepared. How do we handle expenses? Keep all receipts for reimbursement. What about travel insurance? It's already arranged by the company. Is there anything else we should know? Just be on time for all meetings. Got it. I'm excited for the trip. Me too. It will be productive. Looking forward to it. Same here. Safe travels. Thanks, Nancy. See you tomorrow. Dialogue 3. Employee Training. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Helen. How's it going? Good, thanks. Ready for the training session? Yes, I am. What's the focus today? We're covering new software skills. Sounds important. What software? It's a project management tool. Do we need to prepare anything? Just bring your laptop. What's the agenda? We'll start with a basic overview. How long is the training? It's about two hours. Who is leading the session? The IT manager, Mr. Smith. Will there be a Q&A? Yes, at the end of the session. Can we ask questions during? It's better to wait until the end. 
What if I miss something? We'll have handouts for review. Are there any practice exercises? Yes, we'll have a few. Will there be a break? Yes, a short break halfway through. What should we focus on? Pay attention to key features. Is there a follow-up? Yes, a practical workshop next week. How do we sign up for that? I'll send out the details later. Will there be any tests? No tests, just hands-on practice. How will we get feedback? Through a short survey after the session. Is this training mandatory? Yes, it's required for all team members. What if I have prior commitments? Let me know, and we can reschedule. How can we prepare? Review the pre-training materials. Where can we find those materials? I've emailed them to everyone. What if I didn't get the email? Check your spam folder, or ask me. How is the training room set up? We'll have computers and projectors. Are refreshments provided? Yes, coffee and snacks will be available. What's the dress code? Business casual is fine. Do we need to bring anything else? No, just your laptop and notes. How will this training help us? It will improve our project management skills. Will there be any group work? Yes, we'll work in small teams. Can we choose our teams? I'll assign the teams for balance. How will success be measured? By how well we use the new tools. Will there be any support after training? Yes, we'll have follow-up sessions. How do we contact support? Email or call the IT help desk. What if we have technical issues? Report them immediately for quick fixes. How often will we have training? This is a one-time session for now. Will there be advanced training later? Yes, more advanced sessions will come. How do we stay updated? Check your email for announcements. What if I have additional questions? Feel free to ask during the Q&A. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. It will be very useful. Thanks for the info, Helen. You're welcome, Nancy. See you there. Dialogue 4. Networking event. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Jane. Ready for the networking event? Yes, I am. What should we expect? There will be many professionals there. That sounds great. Who will be there? People from our industry and other fields. Are there any key speakers? Yes, there will be a few keynote speakers. What topics will they cover? Trends and new ideas in our industry. What time does the event start? It starts at 10 a.m. Where is it happening? At the Downtown Conference Center. Do we need to bring anything? Just business cards and a notepad. Will there be a schedule? Yes, it's in the event brochure. What should we wear? Business attire is best. Are there any specific goals? To meet new people and explore opportunities. How do we start conversations? Begin with a friendly introduction. What if I'm nervous? Just be yourself and listen actively. 
How long will the event last? Until 4 p.m. Will there be a lunch break? Yes, lunch is provided. What kind of food will there be? It's a buffet with various options. Are there any workshops? Yes, there are several small workshops. How do we sign up for workshops? Register at the event registration desk. Can we ask for help if needed? Of course, staff will be around. Is there a list of attendees? It's not available, but you can meet many. What's the best way to follow up? Send a thank you email after the event. Will there be any giveaways? Yes, some companies will have booths. How should we handle business cards? Exchange cards and make notes about people. What if I want to meet someone specific? Try to find them through the event organizers. Will there be any panel discussions? Yes, there are a few panels scheduled. What should I prepare to say? Have a short introduction about yourself. How do we know which sessions to attend? Check the event schedule and map. Are there any networking tips? Be friendly, ask questions, and listen. Will there be a chance to present? No, but you can join discussions. Can we take notes during sessions? Yes, bring a notepad or use your phone. How do we stay engaged? Participate in discussions and ask questions. Are there any icebreakers? Sometimes, the organizers have activities. What if I have a specific business goal? Focus on meeting people related to that goal. How can we maximize our time there? Plan your schedule and prioritize key contacts. Will there be opportunities for one-on-one -on -one talks? Yes, during breaks and after sessions. How do we handle large crowds? Stay calm and move at your own pace. Is there a follow-up event? Not yet, but there might be future events. How do we connect with people we meet? Connect on LinkedIn or through email. What if I want to introduce my company? Be brief and clear about your company's value. How can we stay organized? Keep track of contacts and notes in your phone. I'm excited about meeting new people. Me too. It should be a great experience. Thanks for the tips, Sarah. You're welcome, Jane. Let's have a great time. Dialogue 5. Supplier Evaluation Hi, Helen. Hi, Nancy. Ready for the supplier evaluation? Yes, I am. What's the first step? We need to review their quality standards. How do we start? Check their product samples. What should we look for? Ensure they meet our quality requirements. What if the samples are not good? We need to address it with them. How do we evaluate their reliability? Look at their delivery history. What if their delivery is late? It's a red flag for reliability. How do we assess their customer service? Check their response time and support quality. Should we visit their facilities? Yes, it's a good idea. What should we inspect during the visit? Check their production process and cleanliness. How do we rate their pricing? Compare their prices with other suppliers. What about their payment terms? 
Evaluate if their terms are flexible and fair. How do we review their past performance? Look at customer feedback and reviews. What if they have poor reviews? Consider it carefully before making a decision. Should we ask for references? Yes, get references from their other clients. How do we test their reliability? Conduct a trial order if possible. What if the trial order is problematic? Address issues and see if they improve. How often should we evaluate suppliers? Regularly, at least once a year. What if a supplier doesn't meet standards? We may need to find a new supplier. How do we communicate our concerns? Discuss issues directly and clearly. Should we document our evaluations? Yes, keep detailed records. How do we handle disagreements? Resolve them professionally and fairly. What about contract terms? Review and ensure they're clear and fair. How do we ensure compliance? Regular audits can help. What if a supplier has potential but issues? Work on improvements and set clear expectations. How do we prioritize suppliers? Based on quality, reliability, and cost. How do we train staff for evaluation? Provide training on evaluation criteria. What if we need to switch suppliers? Plan the transition carefully. How do we keep suppliers motivated? Recognize good performance and provide feedback. What if a supplier improves after issues? Reassess their performance and consider them again. How do we track supplier performance? Use performance metrics and regular reviews. What if we find better suppliers? Compare them with current ones before switching. Should we inform suppliers of their evaluation results? Yes, it's good practice to provide feedback. How do we manage supplier relationships? Maintain open communication and build trust. What if a supplier is critical but has issues? Work closely to resolve issues and support improvement. How do we handle contract renewals? Review performance and negotiate terms. What if we face challenges with a new supplier? Address issues promptly and professionally. How do we measure overall supplier effectiveness? By their performance against our criteria. What if suppliers are not responsive? Follow up and discuss their response times. How do we decide on long-term partnerships? Based on consistent performance and mutual benefits. What's the final step in evaluation? Make a decision and update our supplier list. I think we're ready to start. Yes, let's get going. Thanks for the guidance, Helen. You're welcome, Nancy. Let's make this a success. Dialogue 6. Inventory Management. Hi, Jane. Hi, John. Ready to talk about inventory? Yes, let's get started. What's the first step in inventory management? We need to check current stock levels. How often should we do this? Regularly, at least once a week. What if stock levels are too high? We should reduce our orders. What if stock levels are too low? We need to order more supplies. How do we track inventory? Use an inventory management system. What should we include in the system? Product names, 
quantities, and locations. How do we handle stock discrepancies? Investigate and adjust records as needed. What about seasonal stock changes? Plan orders based on seasonal demand. How do we avoid overstocking? Use sales data to forecast needs. What if we have excess inventory? Consider discounts or promotions to sell it. How do we handle expired stock? Remove it and update inventory records. How do we ensure accurate records? Perform regular audits and checks. What's the best way to store inventory? Keep it organized and in a clean area. How do we manage inventory costs? Track and analyze costs regularly. What's the role of inventory turnover? It measures how quickly inventory sells. How do we calculate turnover rate? Divide sales by average inventory. What's the ideal turnover rate? It depends on the product and market. How do we handle slow-moving items? Offer discounts or bundle them with other products. What's the impact of poor inventory management? It can lead to stockouts or excess stock. How do we prevent stockouts? Monitor inventory levels and reorder on time. How often should we reorder stock? Based on lead times and sales trends. How do we manage supplier relationships? Communicate regularly and build good partnerships. What about safety stock? It's extra inventory to cover unexpected demand. How do we determine safety stock levels? Use past sales data and lead times. How can technology help with inventory? It can automate tracking and ordering. What's a good practice for stock labeling? Use clear labels with product information. How do we handle inventory for multiple locations? Track each location separately and consolidate data. How do we manage returns? Record and restock returned items. What if we find inventory losses? Investigate causes and adjust records. How do we handle seasonal fluctuations? Adjust orders based on forecasted demand. What's the importance of accurate forecasting? It helps maintain optimal stock levels. How do we train staff on inventory management? Provide training on processes and tools. How can we improve inventory accuracy? Regularly update records and check stock. What's the benefit of inventory reports? They provide insights into stock levels and trends. How do we create effective inventory reports? Include key metrics and analysis of trends. What's the role of inventory in customer satisfaction? Proper inventory ensures products are available. How do we handle inventory audits? Perform them regularly and resolve issues. What if inventory management is not working? Review processes and make necessary changes. How can we stay updated on best practices? Read industry articles and attend workshops. What's our next step? Implement these practices and monitor results. Sounds good. Thanks for the info, John. You're welcome, Jane. Let's get started. Dialogue 7. Annual General Meeting, AGM. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Helen. Ready for the AGM? 
Yes, I am. What's the agenda? We'll discuss the company's performance. What else will we cover? Future strategies and plans. When is the AGM? It's this Friday at 10 a.m. Where will it be held? At the main office conference room. Do we need to prepare anything? Yes, review the annual report. What's in the annual report? Financial details and company achievements. Who will present at the meeting? The CEO and CFO will speak. Will there be a Q&A session? Yes, after the presentations. How long will the meeting last? About two hours. What if we have questions before the meeting? Email them to the organizers. How should we dress for the AGM? Business formal is best. Will there be refreshments? Yes, coffee and light snacks. What documents should we bring? Bring a copy of the annual report and your notes. How will the company's performance be reviewed? They'll show key financial metrics and results. What if we don't agree with the reports? You can raise concerns during the Q&A. Will we vote on any issues? Yes, on key resolutions and board members. How do we cast our votes? Use the provided voting slips. Can we vote by proxy? Yes, if you can't attend in person. How do we arrange a proxy vote? Fill out the proxy form and send it in. Will there be a summary of the meeting? Yes, a summary will be shared afterward. What's the goal of the AGM? To discuss performance and plan for the future. How do we stay updated on decisions? Follow up with the meeting minutes. Will there be a presentation on future strategies? Yes, they'll outline upcoming goals. What if I have follow-up questions? Contact the company's investor relations. How do we prepare for the Q&A session? Review key topics and prepare questions. Is there a deadline for submitting questions? Submit them at least one day before. How do we handle technical issues during the meeting? Report them to the IT support team. What if I can't attend the meeting? You can review the recorded meeting later. How do we access the meeting recording? It will be available on the company's website. What if we need more information? Contact the company's support team. Will there be any new announcements? Yes, new projects and updates may be shared. What about company performance goals? They will discuss progress and set new goals. How do we ensure our questions are answered? Ask them clearly and check the follow-up. Will there be a chance to network? Yes, during breaks and after the meeting. What's the best way to prepare? Review all documents and prepare questions. How should we follow up after the meeting? Read the minutes and address any concerns. What's the final step after the AGM? Implement and track the discussed strategies. I'm excited to learn more about the company's future. Me too. It will be informative. Thanks for the info, Nancy. You're welcome, Helen. See you at the meeting. Dialogue 8. Mergers and Acquisitions, M&A. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Sarah. Ready to discuss M&A? Yes, I am. What's M&A? 
It stands for mergers and acquisitions. What does a merger mean? Combining two companies into one. And what's an acquisition? It's when one company buys another. Why do companies do M&A? To expand their operations and grow. How do we start an acquisition? Identify potential target companies. How do we choose the right target? Look for companies that match our goals. What's the first step in a merger? Evaluate the other company's value. How do we value a company? Use financial metrics and market analysis. What documents are needed? Financial reports and business plans. How do we approach the target company? Start with a formal proposal. What if they are not interested? You might need to negotiate terms. How do we handle negotiations? Discuss terms and find common ground. What's due diligence? It's a thorough review of the target company. Why is due diligence important? To identify any risks or issues. How long does due diligence take? It can take several weeks to months. What happens after due diligence? You finalize the agreement and terms. How do we finance an acquisition? Use cash, stock, or loans. What's a merger agreement? It's a legal contract for the merger. How do we manage integration? Combine operations and align strategies. What's the goal of integration? To make the combined company work smoothly. How do we communicate the merger? Inform employees, customers, and stakeholders. What if there are cultural differences? Address them with training and support. How do we track the success of MNA? Monitor financial performance and synergies. What are synergies? Benefits gained from combining operations. What challenges can arise in MNA? Integration issues, cultural clashes, and costs. How do we overcome integration challenges? Plan carefully and manage change well. What's the role of legal advisors? They handle legal aspects and contracts. How do we protect intellectual property? Include IP clauses in the agreement. What's a letter of intent? It's a preliminary agreement to start negotiations. How do we handle regulatory approvals? Submit required documents to regulatory bodies. What if we face regulatory obstacles? Work with legal advisors to resolve issues. How do we assess the merger's impact? Analyze financial results and business growth. What's a post-merger review? It's an evaluation of the merger's success. How often should we conduct reviews? Regularly, to ensure ongoing success. What's the importance of clear communication? It helps manage expectations and reduces confusion. How do we handle employee concerns? Address them openly and provide support. What's the role of management in MNA? Lead the integration and strategic planning. How do we measure success post merger? Use key performance indicators and goals. What are key performance indicators, KPIs? Metrics to measure success and performance. How do we ensure a smooth transition? Plan carefully and execute consistently. What if we encounter unforeseen issues? Address them promptly and adjust plans. What's the benefit of a well-planned MNA? 
it can lead to significant growth and efficiency. How do we maintain focus during m a Stay aligned with strategic goals and priorities. What's the final step in the m a process? Complete the integration and review outcomes. Sounds like a complex process. It is, but careful planning helps a lot. Thanks for explaining, Nancy. You're welcome, Sarah. Let's make it work. Dialogue 9. Customer Feedback Analysis. Hi, Jane. Hi, Sarah. Ready to talk about customer feedback? Yes, I am. What's the first step? Collect feedback from customers. How do we collect feedback? Use surveys and feedback forms. Where should we send these surveys? Email them to customers or post online. How do we ask for feedback? Ask clear and simple questions. What types of questions should we ask? Ask about their experience and suggestions. How often should we collect feedback? Regularly, to stay updated. What's the next step after collecting feedback? Analyze the responses. How do we analyze feedback? Look for common themes and patterns. What tools can we use for analysis? Use spreadsheets or analysis software. How do we handle negative feedback? Address it and find solutions. What about positive feedback? Use it to reinforce what we're doing right. How do we share feedback with the team? Summarize and present key points. How do we prioritize feedback? Focus on issues that impact many customers. What if feedback is unclear? Follow up with customers for more details. How can we use feedback to improve products? Implement changes based on customer suggestions. What if feedback suggests a major change? Evaluate the impact and feasibility. How do we track improvements? Measure changes in customer satisfaction. How do we ensure feedback is actionable? Focus on practical and specific suggestions. What if there are conflicting feedbacks? Weigh them and decide based on overall impact. How do we thank customers for their feedback? Send a thank you note or offer a small reward. What about feedback on customer service? Address service issues and train staff. How can we encourage more feedback? Make it easy and offer incentives. What if feedback is too positive? It's good, but keep looking for areas to improve. How do we handle sensitive feedback? Address it carefully and privately. How often should we review feedback? Regularly, to stay responsive. How do we integrate feedback into our processes? Update procedures and product designs. How do we measure the success of changes? Track customer satisfaction and sales. What if feedback is not actionable? Determine if it aligns with company goals. How do we keep customers informed about changes? Communicate updates through newsletters or emails. What's the role of feedback in product development? It helps guide design and features. How do we ensure feedback is representative? Collect from a diverse group of customers. What if customers are not responding? Try different methods or incentives. How do we analyze feedback from social media? 
Use social media tools to track mentions and comments. What if feedback is about competitors? Learn from it and compare with our offerings. How do we balance feedback with business goals? Align feedback with our strategic objectives. How do we train staff to handle feedback? Provide training on customer service and response. How often should we update our feedback process? Regularly, to keep it effective. What's the benefit of acting on feedback? It improves customer satisfaction and loyalty. How do we stay engaged with customers? Keep communication open and responsive. What if feedback points to a new trend? Explore it and adapt our strategies. How do we ensure feedback is not biased? Collect from a wide range of customers. What's the final step in feedback analysis? Implement changes and review results. Thanks for the advice, Jane. You're welcome, Sarah. Let's use this feedback wisely. Dialogue 10. Quality Control. Hi, Jane. Hi, John. Ready to talk about quality control? Yes, I am. What's quality control? It's checking products to meet standards. Why is quality control important? To ensure products are good for customers. How do we start quality control? Begin with clear quality standards. What should the standards include? Product features, materials, and performance. How do we inspect products? Use checklists and testing methods. What types of tests should we use? Physical tests and performance tests. How do we handle defective products? Remove them from the production line. What if a product fails the test? Investigate the cause and fix it. How do we train staff for quality control? Provide training on standards and procedures. What tools are needed for inspections? Use gauges, meters, and software tools. How often should we inspect products? Regularly, at different stages of production. How do we document quality control results? Record results in quality control logs. What should we include in the logs? Date, product details, and test outcomes. How do we track quality trends? Analyze data from quality control logs. What if there are many defects? Review processes and improve them. How do we ensure consistency and quality? Standardize procedures and train staff well. What's the role of inspections? To catch problems before products reach customers. How do we address customer complaints? Investigate and make necessary adjustments. How do we maintain high-quality standards? Regularly review and update standards. What's a quality control plan? It outlines procedures for maintaining quality. How do we implement a quality control plan? Follow the plan's steps and monitor progress. How often should we review the plan? Regularly, at least once a year. What's the role of quality control in product development? To ensure the final product meets the standards. How do we improve quality control? Use feedback and learn from mistakes. What if a supplier's product quality is poor? Work with the supplier to improve quality. How do we set quality benchmarks? 
Define clear standards and compare to them. How do we involve customers in quality control? Gather their feedback on product quality. What's the benefit of customer feedback? It helps us improve products and services. How do we handle changes in quality standards? Update procedures and train staff on new standards. How do we measure quality control effectiveness? Track defect rates and customer satisfaction. What if quality issues keep happening? Investigate root causes and make corrections. How do we communicate quality standards to the team? Share them clearly and regularly. What's the importance of quality checks during production? To catch and fix issues early. How do we ensure compliance with quality standards? Regular audits and inspections. What if there's a disagreement about quality? Discuss and resolve issues with evidence. How do we ensure quality control is consistent? Use standardized procedures and regular training. What's the final step in quality control? Review results and adjust processes as needed. How do we keep improving quality control? Stay updated with best practices and feedback. Thanks for the tips, Jane. You're welcome, John. Let's keep our quality high.